नमस्ते वेलकम टू द वीडियो ऑन इंटरप्रिटेशन ऑन लिवर फंक्शन टेस्ट विथ केस बेस्ड डिस्कशन आई एम डॉक्टर महेश हिरोलाल एसोसिएट प्रोफेसर एस डी एम कॉलेज ऑफ आयुर्वेदा हासन लिवर इज द वन ऑफ द मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट ग्लैंड इन द ह्यूमन बॉडी एंड परफॉर्म्स मल्टीपल फंक्शन इट इज द सेंटर ऑफ द कार्बोहाइड्रेट्स लिपिड्स protein vitamins and mineral metabolism it will synthesize the different proteins and blood coagulation factors liver detoxifies the ammonia into the urea liver stores the glucose in the form of glycogen and iron in the form of ferritin and it will also stores the many vitamins it will secretes the bile and it is having the major role in the excretory and the protective mechanism no single test is sufficient to provide the complete information of liver functions so a group of blood tests are used to evaluate the liver functions and it is called as liver function test liver function tests will also give the type and the pattern of liver disorders it will also gives the information about the extent and the progression of liver disorders the profile of liver function tests includes total bilirubin direct and indirect bilirubin enzymes like sgot sgpt also called as ast alt alkaline phosphatase total proteins albumin globulin and its ratios some labs will include prothrombin time and urea in liver function tests before going to discuss lft in detail there is a need to discuss about bilirubin metabolism when rbcs are destructed hemoglobin is converted into the heme the heme is again converted into biliverdin biliverdin is converted into bilirubin which is called as indirect bilirubin or also called as unconjugated bilirubin this unconjugated bilirubin will enter into the liver cells it will get conjugated with two glucuronate then it is called as conjugated bilirubin or it's also called as direct bilirubin this direct bilirubin will enter into the intestine through the bile in the intestine by the bacterial enzymes it will be converted into urobilinogen and stercobilinogen urobilinogen is reabsorbed and it will be excreted through the urine and the stercobilinogen will give the color to the fecal matter and will be excreted through the fecal matter jaundice is an a medical condition where yellowish discoloration of skin sclera and mucous membrane are seen due to the increased level of circulating bilirubin in blood there are three types of jaundice hemolytic or it's also called as prehepatic jaundice second one is hepatic or hepatocellular jaundice the third one is obstructive also called as post hepatic jaundice this is normal range of lft there may be the slight changes in the reference ranges from laboratory to the laboratory hemolytic or prehepatic jaundice is caused by the increase in destruction of rbcs which will lead for high unconjugated bilirubin the causes for hemolytic jaundice may be extrinsic causes or the intrinsic causes the extrinsic causes like incompatible blood transfusion malarial fever or autoimmune hemolysis will lead for hemolytic jaundice the intrinsic factors like g6pd deficiency thalassemia sickle cell anemias will lead for hemolytic jaundice in hemolytic jaundice there will be the rise in total bilirubin especially there will be the rise in indirect bilirubin direct bilirubin will be normal other parameters like sgot sgpt alkaline phosphatase and proteins will be within the normal limits hepatocellular or hepatic jaundice is due to the damage to the parenchymal cells of the liver 
it may occur by the two different scenarios the first one is infective or the toxic causes like viral hepatitis alcoholic liver disease or the drug induced hepatitis may lead for the hepatocellular jaundice the second one is the chronic hepatitis or the gilbert syndromes will lead for the defective conjugation where there is a reduced number of functioning parenchymal cells which will also lead for hepatocellular jaundice the lft picture will be different in these two scenarios so the knowledge of these two scenarios is the most important in diagnosis of hepatocellular jaundice in hepatocellular jaundice due to the infective and the toxic causes there will be the rise in total bilirubin there will be equal rise in direct and indirect bilirubin the sgot and sgpts will be raised about 10 to 15 times which will indicate the hepatocellular jaundice the alkaline phosphatase and the proteins will be normal in this scenario in another scenario of hepatocellular jaundice where there is a reduced number of functioning cells due to the chronic causes like chronic hepatitis or cirrhosis of liver there will be rise in total bilirubin especially there will be the rise in indirect bilirubin compared to the rise in direct bilirubin the sgot and sgpt will be normal or sometimes they will be towards the lower range which will indicate the bad prognosis of hepatocellular jaundice total proteins will be reduced especially the albumin will be reduced which is the major cause for the ascites edema and pleural effusions in this scenario altered prothrombin time can be observed the obstructive jaundice is also called as post hepatic jaundice is due to the obstruction to the flow of bile the gallstones carcinoma of head of pancreas strictures of bile duct and enlarged lymph nodes may lead to the obstruction to the flow of bile and lead to the obstructive jaundice in obstructive jaundice there will be rise in total bilirubin especially there will be the more rise of direct bilirubin compared to indirect bilirubin rise sgot and sgpts will be within normal limit alkaline phosphatase will be raised about 5 to 6 times which is a indicator of obstructive jaundice total proteins will be within the normal limit in hepatocellular jaundice especially in viral hepatitis the diagnosis has to be confirmed with different serological investigations the investigations like glutamyl transpeptidase fetoprotein serum seroplasmin ana etc are used to make the specific diagnosis of hepatobiliary disorder now we will discuss some of the cases how to use the different investigations to make the final diagnosis and how to interpret the lft in these type of cases a 30 year male patient complaining of raised body temperature since one week associated with shivering and profuse sweating patient attender noticed yellowish discoloration of skin and eyes on examination pallor is present ictus is present and the temperature is about 1 or 2 degree fahrenheit the physician will chooses these investigations to make the final diagnosis like cbc lft malarial parasite dengue viral and urine routine in cbc there is a reduced hb estimation and reduced rbc the lft shows rise in total bilirubin and there is a more rise in indirect or unconjugated bilirubin alp is normal 
SGOT and SGPTs are slightly raised and the total protein is within the normal limit. Dengue and coidal tests were negative. In peripheral smear, malarial parasites were present. The final diagnosis for this case will be malarial fever and hemolytic jaundice secondary to the malarial fever. A male patient aged about 25 years complaining of loss of appetite, increased body temperature, nausea and vomiting since 8 to 10 days. On examination, the pallor is present but it is mild. The ictrus is noticed by the physician and the temperature is 1 or 2 degree Fahrenheit. The physician chooses this investigation to make the diagnosis like CBC, malarial parasite, dengue, vidal, urine routine and LFT is chosen because physician noticed ictrus. The CBC shows reduced total count and relatively there is an the increase in lymphocytes. Dengue, vidal and malarial parasites were negative. The LFT shows increase in bilirubin and increase in bilirubin is due to the E. coli rise in direct and indirect bilirubin. The extreme rise in SGOT and SGPT which will indicate the hepatocellular damage. The total protein, albumin and globulins were within the normal reference range and ALP is within the normal reference range. The reduced total count and the picture of differential count indicates the viral infection and LFT indicates the hepatocellular jaundice. With these two observations, the provisional diagnosis can be done as viral hepatitis. The final diagnosis of viral hepatitis has to be done with the different serological markers. A male patient aged about 65 years complaining of loss of appetite, distension of abdomen, swelling in feet associated with breathlessness since 4 to 5 months. On history, patient is a known case of chronic alcoholism since 20 to 25 years. On examination, mild pallor is present, ictrus is present, edema is present on the both the feet which is pitting type of edema. On per abdominal examination, the inspection shows the distension of abdomen, averted umbilicus. On palpation, abdomen is soft, fluid thrill test is positive and shifting dullness is absent. This shows the gross ascites. The physician may choose these investigations to make the final diagnosis. They are CBC, LFT, RFT, USG abdomen and chest x-ray. The LFT shows the increase in bilirubin, especially the indirect bilirubin is more raised than the direct bilirubin. SGOT and SGPTs were within the normal limit towards the lower end. Total protein is reduced drastically. USG abdomen shows gross ascites and the fluid is measuring about 1500 to 2000 ml. It also shows the liver cirrhosis. Chest x-ray shows mild pleural effusion in the both the lungs. The final diagnosis for this case is alcoholic liver disease with cirrhosis of liver. A 40 year female patient came to OPD with complaining of pain in abdomen, nausea and omitting since a week. On examination, pallor was absent. Ictrus was present. Per abdomen, there is a tenderness in right hypochondric region. The physician chooses a simple investigations like CBC, LFT and USG abdomen 
to make the diagnosis of this case. The LFT shows increase in bilirubin, especially there is a more increase in direct bilirubin compared to the indirect bilirubin. ELP was raised drastically, which shows the obstructive pathology in the liver. Other LFT parameters were within the normal limits. The USG abdomen shows multiple gallstones in the gallbladder. These gallstones are multiple in number and they were obstructing the bile duct. Final diagnosis for this case may be cholelithiasis, obstructive jaundice secondary to cholelithiasis. Thank you for watching this video. In next video, we will discuss on laboratory investigations in diabetic mellitus. Kindly like, subscribe and comment in the comment box and share this video to the maximum numbers. Thank you.